Hello and welcome. My name is Kathleen Ruddy. I'm the CEO of the St. Baldrick's Foundation, where we work with heroes for kids with cancer every day. Thank you so much for your patience hanging in for us today um, for our guest uh, who had a literal fire drill at the National Cancer Institute today, but she's back with us and I'm so thrilled to introduce you to Dr. Brigitte Wiedemann, a pediatric oncologist who has four key roles at the National Cancer Institute. Among them, Dr. Wiedemann serves as special advisor on childhood cancer to the director of the NCI, and she's also chief of the NCI's pediatric oncology branch. Welcome, Dr. Wiedemann. Thank you so much, Kathleen, for inviting me and having me today um, talk a little bit about the work that I do and how it relates to childhood cancer and, and um, other activities at the National Cancer Institute. Well, we're thrilled to have you. And St. Baldrick's, as you know, is both a big proponent of childhood cancer advocacy and the largest charitable funder of research grants. So we have a deep commitment to the success of your institute, and we're eager to know more about your plans and how things are going. So let's start with a little bit with you, if we may. Uh, you went to medical school in your native Germany and then in Scotland, mm -hmm. but you seized the opportunity to become a fellow in pediatric hematology and oncology at the National Cancer Institute. Correct. What was the benefit of training at the NCI and continuing to conduct research there? Yeah, I think that was probably the best move I ever made coming to the NIH. Um, from a general perspective, studying a different medical systems really brings a fresh and new perspective. So in Scotland, I had a lot of hands-on clinical training and met some master clinicians. That was very instrumental to my further career. And then during my residency in Cologne, Germany, I definitely began to think that I would want to become a clinical researcher. And my former mentor then, Professor Bertold, an expert in neuroblastoma, a very important pediatric solid tumor, connected me to the NIH and the NCI pediatric branch, where I then was um, accepted to do a fellowship. And this first year of clinical training in the pediatric oncology branch was just amazing. I, I witnessed starting then and continuing now to more than 30 years later, so many advances from developing the first effective therapies for children with HIV, to top-notch clinical trials targeting central nervous system leukemia, sarcomas, and now more recently immunotherapies for leukemias and solid tumors. And I think the key message here at the intramural research program um, of designing um, clinical trials that really help advance the knowledge of rare diseases, clinical care, and the development of better treatments. And, on top of all of this, what struck me was that everyone at the NIH and the pediatric oncology branch was enthusiastic and so fully committed to the mission. So I'm, I'm so glad that I was accepted into the fellowship. And um, to date, I love to come to work every day. And I think this is an amazing environment. Well, from what I know of pediatric research over the year, or what I've gathered over the years, is that the drive and determination are essential, but proper training and great mentorship are so important. And you're yeah. certainly a beneficiary of that, but you're passing that on now through your work. Tell us, please, about your new role with NCI and how child cancer research fits with the broader research goals at NCI. Yeah, I, so within the NCI, I'm I, I'm the P chief of the pediatric oncology branch, a very diverse group of basic and clinical researchers. And our mission is really very well aligned with the mission of the National Cancer Institute, which is to help people, children and adults with cancer to live longer and healthier lives. And ideally to identify treatments that are more effective and less toxic for patients so that they have better survivorship. Um, within the NCI, there are so many programs that are supported. Many of them are focused on adults, but I think many of them are applicable to children and adolescents and young adults. And so my role as a special advisor is to um, make sure that I provide through the best of my ability guidance to the NCI director 
to recognize these opportunities that may, for example, start in adult cancers, but are really applicable to pediatric cancers, and also to identify unmet needs that we hopefully can address better for children and adolescent and young adults with cancers. Um, as part of this role, I have taken on more of an, I don't want to say leadership role, but a critical role within NCI's um, new initiative called the Childhood Cancer Data Initiative, which was uh, started in 2019. And I'll help to coordinate efforts in the CCDI as a pediatric oncologist. And um, I'm also serving as the co-chair of the a Childhood Cancer Data Initiative Engagement Committee. I, I don't know where you find the time to do all of those things, but I'm really grateful that you are advocating for opportunities, more opportunities to help children um, through the work that's being done for adult patients. And that does not mean that there isn't pediatric specific research going on. It's additive, isn't it? It means that we would expand the amount of research and progress available to, for kids through all of these things that you do, but also for looking at um, the adult programs and looking for new opportunities for kids. Thank you. So tell us about the CCDI and how it's going. Many in our audience may not really know what it is, um, but tell us also um, what it enables um, researchers yeah. to do. Yeah, so thank you. The um, Childhood Cancer Data Initiative came first to life actually a few years ago, but I agree with you, many people may not actually know what it is, and hopefully hopefully that will change. It was actually uh, at the um, State of the Union when our president then announced that there would be funding, substantial funding for childhood cancer for the next 10 years. And Dr. Natropoulos, our NCI director, um, thought that an important goal would be knowing that we deal in pediatric cancer with a small subset um, of patients compared to adult cancers to make sure that we collect data, meaningful data, um, and connect the data for every patient with childhood cancer, which is really an aspirational goal. And not only to collect the data, but to make the data accessible to learn from the data and ultimately to benefit every patient with cancer. And so the, the broad strokes is that the CTI really looks to facilitate the sharing of already existing data, but also the generation of new data, basic and clinical data that comes from anywhere, um, including cooperative groups, children's hospitals, clinics, networks broadly, to really help accelerate what we can learn especially for tumors of more unmet need where we don't have effective treatments or we maybe don't even know the natural history very well. And the goal is to accelerate our you know, ability really to make advances through the Childhood Cancer Data Initiative. And it is really, um, I think I come to this a little bit later, which I like a lot about this, meant to be while it is NCI coordinated, it is a community-centered effort where everyone is important. And here I especially think advocacy is critical because advocacy connects us with all of the stakeholders. And we want to hear from patients, from advocacy, from researchers, from clinicians, so that the CCDI really becomes what is meant by the broad community to be important and not just by a small group of investigators or researchers. It sounds like one of the great benefits of this, I mean, knowing that um, the NCI and Congress have put more money into pediatric cancer research in recent years, um, they're still finite dollars. And so the importance of CCDI is helping to rule out research paths that may not be as productive um, or fruitful in terms of saving kids as others and helping you identify where the most promising um, developments are likely to come. Is that right? I, I think that's a great point. And, uh, you know, for this reason, we get input from many stakeholders. Um, there was a um, Board of Scientific Advisors working group, very broad, composed, that actually led to setting agenda items. And within the CCDI, as it is now, we have different working groups and the working groups again have very broad um, participation 
Um, each of the working groups has advocacy representation. And I would say from my, you know, from my working group, the engagement committee, I can say how critical advocacy has been in really making sure we are grounded and that we get our ideas to the community. And I've learned that advocates are very eager not only to talk, but to do things. And so I, I think that is a very important aspect. We hear from advocates and from others in the in the meetings, um, you know, feedback that then goes to leadership and will be taken into account. I think you're absolutely right. Um, while it is substantial funding, it is limited and we have to make sure it gets to the areas that are the most needed. Well, I think the American taxpayer whose dollars are making this work possible would appreciate hearing that, that the NCI is being so careful to make sure that the dollars are well invested in, yeah. in research. Um, if you're just joining us, we're speaking with Dr. Brigitte Wiedemann, Chief of the NCI's Pediatric Oncology Branch and Special Advisor to the NCI Director on Child and Cancer Issues. So, Dr. Bino, why, why is data so important to advancing child and cancer research? Yeah, I, I think that's a, it's a great question. And I always come back, uh, you know, and I think Dr. Annette Sharpless had the same idea, like pediatric cancers are rare in comparison to the adult cancers. And um, in order to make advances, we have to work together. And I would say in the big picture, pediatric oncologists really work closely and it is a community effort. And we've made many, many advances. However, um, we need to do much better and a lot more work needs to get done. And there are limitations. And data sharing definitely is one limitation. Even if we're willing to share data on, let's say, for example, a specific rare tumor, that can be very difficult because the data was collected in a different way. It's a substantial effort. And if we were able to collect consistent, high quality data and have accessibility to the data across the entire community, I believe that could advance, um, you know, pediatric cancer work substantially, and in particular for the tumors that may be very rare or the tumors where we have not identified um, effective treatments to date. And this is something the CCDI is aiming to do. It's also aiming to get easier data extraction so that we potentially could do this much more quickly than we can do this right now. And, and if this works for pediatric cancers, then this may be something that could be applied to the more common adult cancers as well. It all starts with data and I, I think it ends with data. The better data we collect um, and the more comprehensive, the better we will be able to help pediatric and adolescent and young adult patients with cancers. You've used the word rare and I think you're using it in the context of rare compared to other diseases that might occur more frequently. Yes. Um, I don't think you mean it that it's, uh, as sometimes people hear it, as a oh, rare might mean it's a small problem, but childhood cancers are actually a staggering problem for the kids suffering them. And it's a lifelong problem. So the importance of utilizing the data well to create more efficacious lex toxic cures in childhood mean you're buying a whole lifetime of better health in addition to that child's future, right? Absolutely. And and I guess when I say, you're totally right, when I say rare, all in comparison to, you know, the common cancers such as breast cancer, prostate cancer, all pediatric cancers are rare. But yes, they are hugely important mm -hmm. for the reason that you name. Um, you know, if we make an impact in a child with cancer, there are many, many, many years to come. And, you know, the goal of better treatments and better survivorship for a young patient is tremendously important. I think when I I, I said rare, it, it this is a personal research effort I have. It is in looking at pediatric cancers that may be so rare that it is difficult to study them effectively because you may only have 50 across you know, the entire United States, for example, in a year. And then to conduct clinical trials and understand these tumors can be a very difficult task. And if there was a way through a data initiative to bring these 50 patients 
in one database that could be a substantial advance and help us you know learn more about these tumors um, and advanced therapies but all pediatric cancers are important so to fuel the work you're talking about how does ccdi work with other child cancer research efforts that nci oversees um, like the bio repository work that mm -hmm. Is fueled by the Child Cancer Star Act and others. Yeah, I think that's a that's a great question. And as I already said, it is meant to really be a community effort and a network, an ecosystem. And it's very important to connect with other important efforts, such as the Star Act. And while both, I think, started separately, they actually complement each other. And I think will in the future work very nicely together to strengthen the work that is being done. And I would say the CCDI aligns very well with the mission, the important goals that the STAR Act has. Um, so the MCI, the Molecular Characterization Initiative, which I may like to briefly uh, mention, which is an effort from the CCDI to um, perform state-of-the-art molecular characterization of pediatric cancer patients that have newly diagnosed tumors to provide this back to the patient and to the caregiver to enable a better diagnosis, potentially better treatment and clinical trial participation. This is one of the efforts that the CCDI has started in a collaboration currently with the Children's Oncology Group, which identifies these patients. Um, this is an effort that I think aligns very well with uh, the Childhood Cancer Star Act biobanking and research provisions. Um, the collection of tumor samples will be conducted in part through NCI support of the COG rare tumor uh, populations biobanking project. And so this is a very important aspect, obviously, of the STAR Act. Um, the STAR Act also focuses on tissue and blood collection for specific groups of patients where the tissue collection currently is inadequate or lacking, which is fantastic. And I think that, again, um, is very much aligned with what the CCDI and the Molecular Characterization Initiative envisions. Mm -hmm. This includes um, biospanking of patients that are adolescents and young adults, which is a very important need. And the data that comes from this direct and from these collections will directly feed into the linked systems that the CCDI is creating. And then another very important aspect of the start um, is um, relapse patients, patients with relapse tumors. And so uh, such as, for example, samples that are collected on uh, the COG pediatric match trial. And I believe this is an effort that we hope to get to um, with the child, uh, the molecular characterization initiative where we currently have the focus on newly diagnosed tumors, but we want to move on to patients with relapse tumors as well, because they have such an unmet and high unmet need. That is very true. I, I'm thrilled and excited to hear about all these initiatives because it's all of it is such important work and we need more of it. So thank you so much for playing that leadership role. So all of these programs are made possible through advocacy and um, wonderful advocates who go diligently and, and help educate Congress and their staff yeah. um, about the needs and help them figure out how to deploy the federal budget well yeah. and to entrust you with those funds. Um, St. Baldrick's is blessed with a great um, uh, network of passionate advocates. What further role can advocates play to further the NCI's research goals? Well, I, I think, you know, and I say this from my own experience as a now researcher for 30 years, um, more and more over the years, I see how important advocacy is. And I, I have learned that advocacy is absolutely critical to all of the efforts that we have. Um, as a researcher, an individual researcher, and then for big, big initiatives such as the CCDI or for the efforts um, of the NCI. And so I'm very grateful to all of the advocates. And I can say uh, working at the NCI and in particular at the CCDI, um, I, I have seen how, how instrumental this is. And I can give you um, some examples. Um, um, I think advocates 
have firsthand knowledge. They really know what they're talking about, and that is critical. And with that, they can impact on trial design, making sure we ask the right question, making sure that whatever we do is actually going to be feasible, and then getting the word out about something. For example, um, our engagement committee from the CCDI has helped tremendously in making sure that we know how do we reach out to patients and to caregivers that they'll actually participate in the molecular characterization initiative. And then ultimately advocates can be involved in many other aspects such as data analysis. Um, we have at the NCI, uh, the Office of Advocacy Relations, which I think is wonderful because they really can connect with multiple of the advocacy organizations, which is critical depending on what the question is, you might need a different advocacy support group. And there are so many. And um, as part of the engagement committee, um, I would say we've had um, Sarah Milbrook from Singh Baldrick's and, and Ben Vicky Bungas, our members. And I've been so impressed with the open and candid um, advice that we get, but also the willingness to do things and to help um, make things better. And I, I'm sure you, you will know that Sarah has gotten busier by just being part of the engagement committee. And um, we hope truthfully to um, have this as a collaborative effort and without advocacy, that would simply not be possible. Well, thank you for recognizing both Sarah and Vicki, who are extraordinary. I have so much respect for them and their dedication and um, all of the advocates who have helped make the STAR Act, CCDI, and so many other important programs possible. And um, Dr. Wiedemann, I think I can speak safely on behalf of families throughout the country um, when I say thank you um, and that every family is so grateful to you for applying your vast talents and expertise to help their children. Um, I think the words thank you are hardly sufficient, but they are heartfelt. Yeah, and let, let me thank you. And I always end by thanking um, our patients and families um, because you're, you're right, everybody, it starts right there. And um, without our patients and families, you know, supporting us, um, we would not make the progress we make and without the partnership that we establish. And thank you for having me here today. I, I'm happy that I can be a small piece of this big puzzle. And I hope Sincerely, that will make a lot more progress um, in the next years and can look back proudly to what, what we all jointly have accomplished. Well, you're a very important piece of that puzzle. And I hope you'll come back and talk with us again and, and share with us the updates in a few months' time or next year, whenever is appropriate. We'd love to hear more. And to our audience, be sure to join us again Thursday, September 8th at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, where we're gonna speak with Dr. Sam Volchenbaum, the architect of the Pediatric Cancer Data Commons, and we'll get to talk about how that works with CCDI as well. Um, the Pediatric Cancer Data Commons is another key partner in the national strategy to conquer kids' cancer. Until then, thanks to all of you for remembering that you don't have to be a doctor or a lifeguard to save kids with cancer. You can learn how by visiting stbaldricks.org. Thank you.